What's up, everybody? This is Tom with Deep Video Live. We're here with Anti Sapien from Brooklyn, New York. Damn right. Here out in uh, Division Brewery, out in Arlington, Texas. And uh, welcome, guys. Thanks for braving the elements, coming on down. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So let's uh, let's jump right into it. So you guys are uh, from Brooklyn, yes? Yeah. I mean, technically we all live in Queens, but if I sneeze, I end up in Brooklyn. So we we just <laughs> stick with Brooklyn because that's where we started. Yeah. Right on. Well, uh, there was something I wanted to touch on specifically with uh, New York metal bands. There's, there's just something about the greater New York area that really encourages innovation with uh, just very unorthodox but still badass sounds. Like you, you get bands like Immolation and Malignancy and like uh, Cannibal Corpse got their start in Buffalo, which I know that's way that's <laughs> way the They're a New that York band, don't forget. <laughs> Damn right. But I just I, I want to know, uh, what's your guys' perspective on that? What it is about New York specifically that just encourages such a unique sound? Um, I mean, first of all, maybe just the, the, the history of New York and New York City being a melting pot to start with. Um, but also just maybe the over-urban aspects. Like, it's just complete like metropolis at this point and with everyone living on top of each other sharing each other's ideas i mean back to the melting pot aspect but just people being like sick of hearing the same stuff over and over and being like just forced to come up with something weird mm -hmm. i mean same way that like i guess the fashion industry is just is just as off the cuff in new york as well so yeah just, this aspect of living there maybe i don't know i was gonna say i can i can definitely say from living there for a long time now it's like You'll go to a party or you'll be at a show and you'll meet some just random person that they're like, yo, I came to the show because like I dig metal, I dig metal, but check this out. And then like you might end up starting a project with this random stranger who's like sort of metal adjacent. Maybe they're fucking like a hip hop dude or like into like dance music or like some like industrial shit. And you end up getting like an amalgamation of those two things. There's a lot of like noise scene kids that'll, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like the noise and grind scene have, I mean, that they've been kind of bedfellows for a long time, but like you get a lot of interesting sounds coming out of those, you know, coagulations. All right, the first person to go and pay two bucks for that Alabama record at the entrance and smash it over someone's head during a song gets a free fucking t-shirt. Especially a lot of like young people, I think if you had to like see where the most like area of the younger generation getting involved in the music scene, it's definitely in, like the grind and punk area. So yeah, and that noise. Is, that is actually a perfect segue because I know uh, I, I'm not personally really steeped in it myself, but I know that New York also has a very strong punk scene too. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah we get a. Uh, I mean, again, it's. It's always following the kids, too. I mean, that's the thing. People, you know, there's a lot of jaded old people in uh, the metal scene everywhere, but certainly in New York. And that old guard you can see is, like, at least opening their minds more because the kids are forcing them to. Like, you can't ignore the energy of these kids and their new ideas, Absolutely. you know? And I think that, too, it's just uh, gatekeeping has kind of died out a little bit. I know you get the... There's a big controversy about like whether or not we should be gatekeeping the scene, but it's like we were all nerds once with fucking weird ideas of our own that we just wanted to fit in with something that we mean, were. What do you mean once? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you're authentic about wanting to be a part of something and learn and grow with it, then like you want to inject your own ideas into it, and like there's so much access with the internet and technology now for kids to just like throw their ideas out there and see like what sticks, and I, I like that personally. So did anyone break that fucking Alabama record? Hell yeah, free shirt. There it is. Yeah. No gatekeeping. No, absolutely not. There's, it's so counterintuitive. But uh, I'm glad you touched on the the, the hip hop scene too, because I've heard from others. I wish I could remember specifically who said it, but somebody has said there's been a huge parallel between the hip hop and the uh, metal scene on the East Coast as well. And I I firmly agree. They've always kind of been like admiring each other from the other side of the fence, like, yo, what's that, what's that guy doing? Damn, he's got some bars. And then- That's yeah. why I feel like metal versus rap in the 90s, it was like one of those like closet issues where it's like, you guys just hug it out. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Wu Tang and Slayer. Come on, we're the same bedfellows. I, I think too, like you see stuff like when um, <clears throat> Mob Deep played, you know, immediately after the headliner at. Um, uh, for M- at MDF, I think it was a couple of years ago, like before COVID and everything. How many people? I, they worked it out so if you had your MDF pass, you could go to the show. And I, the the amount of the ma- of people that were mixed with like hip hop fans, people that were attending Maryland Death Fest, that were metalheads, that were all enjoying it at the same time. It's like, yeah, I was gonna say to deny that. You know, I've played some um, with my other like more punk thrashy band. We played some uh, showcases at like the House of Vans. That used to be in Brooklyn with like just straight hip hop acts. They some of these kids had never seen a guitar player on stage before and shit, but like they're open to it because mm-hmm. the energy's there and it's the same and it's in this under the same roof. So you get a, that that cross pollination is just like it, it's happened already. It's not like waiting to turn into something, but it's, I don't know. It's fucking cool. It's cool to see. What's something about uh, the New York, Brooklyn, whatever, something about the greater New York area that's really awesome that not enough people would know about? Something that's like, you know, your tourist on the beaten path wouldn't know about that, but, uh, but like, from a local perspective. David's House of Brisket, fuck Katz's Deli. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> on Nostrand Avenue, David's House of Brisket. Good luck finding it. I mean, you meant musically or just in general? Uh, in general. Uh, but, you know, you can do, uh, you can do either or. Just um, can you, we're really. <laughs> All right, Jack, can you repeat the question? How, can you, can you, you know use what? it in a sentence? There's definitely um, th- since venues are kind of like forced to close a lot earlier than they used to post COVID. Now um, you get a lot of again follow the kids. There was kids throwing. I don't know if it'll be back this summer, but there was like a train track spot. The kids were just throwing generator shows. So it's like as soon as someone starts moshing, it's just a dust cloud of train oh, dirt, yeah. and, which is fucking gnarly. And then there's uh, this venue, Transpecos. There's this venue, Windjammer. Project Reach. I mean, stuff like that. Yeah, if you were a music fan, like you said, maybe for tourists, if you're visiting New York, those would be things like the, the train tracks, as they were calling it, or Project Reach, which isn't necessarily... It's not um, anything that someone's gatekeeping, but it is a DIY space. You can't necessarily, you know, maybe you can find the address on the internet. I don't think that's necessarily intentional. Ask a punk. Yeah, ask a punk, exactly. So those are things that are happening in the, in the scene in the city that I think are cool aspects of New York because you can still have this stuff that sort of is going on in the background and nobody actually realizes it. Um, it happens in all, everything more than just metal in New York. You could have somebody, you, you're walking down the street and there's nothing but a frosted window and you can see like, there's like a, some kind of cheap disco light in there and there's nothing but, uh, like but nothing but like uh, club music playing. And I'm sure it's not a legal space, but it's kind of the cool thing about New York is you, you totally get that stuff flying under the radar. And people do that with metal too. Like they were doing that at the train tracks and bridge bringing a generator. You know. God knows how many basement shows. Not yeah, basement no, shows. I was going to say there's not, not as many basement shows. There was like a bomb. Warehouses. Where, I was going to say warehouses, lofts. There was like a. They, well, they did that Warthog show in the middle of the street a couple years ago. Yep. And then there was a pool house. These kids, yeah. uh, this band, non-residents, shout out to our homies. They were throwing shows on a, a rooftop, and they called yeah. it like they call themselves the New York illegal scene, and because it's just like a bunch of you know uh, people like kids in Queens, like Hispanic kids would just like throw their fucking shows on a roof until they got like kicked out by the landlord or yeah. some shit. Because they they're like renew their lease after that. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, yeah, they just kind of take over whatever little pocket of the city they, they can get you know, get into, and they're like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do it our way, because, like, why would we go and pay the overhead of some ridiculous venue or something? And, like... Yeah, I mean, I think that's the cool thing about it, too. It doesn't have to... You can kind of... It's almost like a pop-up. You can kind of just get away with doing that as long as you're kind of almost in and out. I mean, they've, they've had... After weird after party stuff for like DJs and stuff in the train in the on the platform in the subway too. But just like he was saying on the roof, you know, we did that uh, with my other band once, and and it was just on uh, an apartment roof that we got access to from somebody that lived there. But you know, you had to run like a hundred foot extension cable <laughs> to the first floor and, and hope you know no nobody showed up. You know. So shut it down, I guess. Well, yeah, it's, it just kind of reminds me of, like, the Beatles, but, like, better. 
<laughs> like, uh, I, mean, I mean, no, uh, no disrespect, but the Beatles. Better than the, the, Beatles, the Beatles. You heard the, it here. The Beatles didn't have D beats. That's all I'm saying. Beatles did not have D beats. What's up, Ringo? Come on. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. You got all that. All you that missed good. opportunity, Ringo. <laughs> you I'm, gonna, it first. I'm gonna stop that now before I get myself in trouble. <laughs> R, it would have been called the R beat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. So, or all right. Beat. On the other side of that. What's something that like just sucks and just just miserable about? <laughs> oh, about living in New York? Yeah, rent. Uh, rent. Um, just the amount of physical excrement on the sidewalk. <laughs> you can't walk down the sidewalk with without looking where you're going for that reason alone. I would say, uh, um, human or animal or just garbage, and you're like, yo, there's a trash can right here, but. Really, uh, I don't really mind the the general filth of New York, but that is the one thing where you're just, you know, if you're doing something, if, you know, you're trying to respond to some important email, right? You're walking down the street. There's a good chance if you weren't paying attention, you just accept the fact that you may have just stepped in some, yeah. some shit. But the the real thing is it's just the blatant, like, Whose dog was just doing that in, the, in right dead center lane, and you didn't, and you left it there. That's well, I would also say, like, I think I may have said something before, but, like, a lot of the venues now, because uh, gentrification, you know, people move to the city because they're like, this is cool, look at all these awesome bars and venues, and then they move into a condo on, like, the second floor above a fucking music venue, and they're like, um, yeah, I'm complaining, it's too loud, and it's, like, 10.30 p.m., uh, right, yeah. so you get a lot of that kind of thing happening now where, like, the vet bar shows will have to be done by 10.30 so that the disco night can start. And Alex can definitely talk about this since he works at St. Vitus. Well, I'm not even going to talk about that. That's that's <laughs> you, you come that. I got one because this, this is a personal one. But this is also a shout-out to Texas so far. We've played two shows in here mm -hmm. in the state. Um, and in Texas, everyone brings their own drum set. And... Uh, <laughs> Now, uh, the thing is, is that if you live in New York, it's sort of, it's not anyone's fault. We all kind of deal with the fact that it's expensive to own a car. It's just as much of a pain in the ass to, to we've taken Uber XLs to the, to the venue with our equipment and stuff like that. You end up, it's, you end up it's, away your game. So if you're asking me what sucks about living in New York as a person, as a, as a drummer, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's that, it's the expectation of just everyone needs to just... Uh, take one on the chin because of the lack of space and transportation for for large objects. We have a fabulous transportation system, but if I want to bring my drums to a show, it's to even with a, even if I have a car, I don't really want to park it at most venues it's <laughs> anyway. It, it's worse. Hour, it's yeah. worse. I'll pay the Uber almost, but then you show up and you're the only guy that wants to use his own kit. Everyone else wants to use the back line because they didn't. They were in the same boat. Uh, so it's the, one of the most unique things about playing in a band in the United States is specific, specific to New York. I don't know if there's another city where you have that issue. Yeah, people but, always ask us. Like, and I'm not. No. You know, people always are asking, like, oh, like, you know, what do you do with the van? And I'm like, this isn't our van. We rent yeah, this yeah. because if you owned a van in New York, I would be driving around all night long trying to park it and never going to bed. Mm -hmm. It's like, no and thing. and I'm not asking for sympathy. It's like I, I love living in that city, and, and it's and it's it's one of those things that you adapt to by living in that city. But if you're asking me what sucks, that's definitely what sucks. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can imagine it's a bit of a logistical nightmare. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I, on, the, on the on the other hand, I wouldn't. <clears throat> I wouldn't give up the fact that I can take a subway anywhere I want at any given time of day or night. And even just coming from Boston, where I grew up and lived for my whole life, <clears throat> phenomenal uh, aspect of living in New York is you can just really get anywhere you want on foot or on a public transit transit yeah, option. I mean, so. Are there any uh, like noticeable? Uh, how involved were you in the scene in Boston? Like, did you uh, were you uh, were you old enough to? be involved in a band when, yeah. you, when you're in Boston? Yeah, oh yeah, no, I mean, I lived in Boston up until I was 35, so mm -hmm. yes, I was, you know, playing in multiple bands, booking shows, working in venues, as many aspects as I suppose you could get at one point, I, I think, like, I worked in enough venues that I don't think I, like, had to pay for 
much atten- uh, uh, attendance because I worked there already. So. Yeah, <laughs> nice, a, uh, nice perk to the job, yeah, I guess. Yeah, if you want to get into shows for free, yeah, work. Work there. Don't ask for the guest list. Just work at the venue. <laughs> that's, that's the DIY spirit <laughs> that I, I love very much about uh, East Coast metal in, in particular. Yeah. There's a very, very strong DIY aspect. But uh, great. So uh, another question I had was, uh, well, first of all, how's the tour been? So far, I probably um, should have led with that, frankly. No, I mean, it's, it's been great. Uh, honestly, I mean, between Blake and I, we, we have a 50, 60 years of, of touring experience. Yeah, yeah, can, if you combine yeah. it. Uh, Age but, is a uh, state of mind. Just kidding. Um, but um, <laughs> this is still like a new band for us and in, in, in a general sense. So this is only the second real tour that this band has done. Um, pretty much every date on this tour, except for the first three or four, have been all brand new markets for us. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's been that all in consideration. It's still been like really, really good. Every t- turnout has been great. We've haven't lost any money. We only had to stay in two hotels and it didn't like come out of pocket for, yeah, 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 just, I know, right? Okay. This is almost like them. This is just over the middle point of the tour. So yeah, let's knock on as much wood as possible. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. But yeah, it's been good, and it's been like a nice, like uh, I don't know, like reason to be like, yeah, it's something that it seems to be going well. And we should plan for yeah, another we tour. About it outside too, the uh, like lots more young kids. Yeah, there's just there's and I mean, there. there's always there's always going to be like little age gaps here and there in the scene, but like. On this tour, we've specifically noticed and played with bands where one of the bands in Jacksonville, the drummer was 15. He's also the tallest person at the show. And I'm yeah, like, what the fuck yeah. you eating, Doc? Yeah. Yeah. But like, so you get all water. these like high school or just out of high school aged kids or like, you know, early 20s or whatever. And it, it's that kind of energy in the scene. Um, like I said, you have that in New York, but there's almost like a split where like, you could play like a sold out Friday at a club in New York with a bunch of 40 year old or in their late thirties, like metal dudes who just stand there. Well, it's, oh, it's yeah. tough too. I mean, in the Northeast in general, not just in New York, but like growing up in Boston, mm-hmm. um, most places you can play a show or a metal show is in a bar over 21, know, over 21 or at, at, at best 18 plus some yeah. places do 16 plus, but yeah. So going into other parts of the country, like Florida, for example. Yeah, they let it, they'll do all ages shows at bars. So yeah, they don't care. They're making they're making money on the bar anyway. And you know, sometimes it's it's not so divided that you can't just not let younger people in because you somehow lose a headcount on, on like beer sa- beer sale options because mm. the venue is like separated enough and, and stuff too from the bar. Don't get me started on fucking merch cuts. Yeah, uh-huh. it's just been it's just been dope to see tons of fucking young kids coming out and just again thrusting that fucking youthful energy in. You know, there's yeah, the, it, metal's not going anywhere. There, it's ever since the I mean I wasn't there, but ever since it started in the '80s, it has maintained or at some points even surpassed its own expectations of how good it can be and and there's just a certain kind of longevity when it comes to metal and that's very refreshing to hear that because uh yes you're right we were talking about that outside we've seen a lot of a lot of young kids and even like little kids yeah. who are like not yep. even sure what the hell's going on but they love the energy and they're just protecting their ears and running Start around like young, little maniacs you know? yeah yeah so, give them the option to make that choice for themselves as yes. they grow and shit it's cool if parents are like you know I'm I'm in my 40s. I could be a parent. I'm an uncle. I'm a perfect uncle, no kids, punk. You get that acronym <laughs> right there? Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, my nephew, my nieces, they've all been to shows and stuff. And when they're really young, like, they're like, just, it's just energy. Like, mm-hmm. they don't know what a fucking, what notes or what, you know, they don't care. And as they grow, they're like, maybe they'll venture out and they become themselves. Maybe they're not like a total metalhead, but like, they still like have that as part of their upbringing. Whereas like, as kids for us, it was like, your parents aren't really going to introduce you to that shit. You have to, like, see, like, Slayer on, like, MTV at 2 in the morning, like, when you're not supposed to be watching TV and be like, what the fuck is that, you know? Like, so it's really cool, like, all these young kids. And I say, like, post-COVID, I swear to God, I'm like, so COVID started, and there's a bunch of 15-, 16-year-old kids that have nothing to fucking do but look at the Internet, and somehow they all got into, like, Metal Ocalypse or some shit because they come out 
sick fucking death metal musicians at age 18 and shit. Or people that like watched Adult Swim and then suddenly were like, what is death metal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about like not gatekeeping? I mean, like, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people got real angry when oh. they realized all these people discovered metal because of that. But then there's like, I mean, I don't know. There's well, plenty of other ways to discover it too. It's not yeah, like, but like the more the merrier. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. The more exactly. the merrier. And that's what I'm saying. These young kids, like, they wouldn't not. They would not have had that option necessarily previously, like 20 years ago or something. So it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I was thinking that, too. They, uh, they have a lot more resources at their disposal. Like, now there's a backlog of shit that they can check out, and they can really, like, sift through what subgenre speaks to them. And there's tab books. There's uh, there's YouTube uh, tutorials. Oh, yeah. There's Patreon uh, tiers for all these other musicians. So they, it, they have the world at their fingertips. So, And that, that speaks to the longevity of metal. Like, why... It, it, Trends come and go with uh, different types of music. Whatever's popular is going to be popular. It's hoorah, yeah, sell out your stadium, whatever. Nobody's going to give a fuck in six years. But (laughs) you fast forward damn near 50 years now, metal is still going as strong now as it was back then, arguably even stronger, although the, there's not as, there might not be as much money to be made in it, but the accessibility has never been higher. I think the enthusiasm is definitely stronger. Again, like, you can... We've been touring for a long time. You go into a gas station 10 years ago looking like this, like you might get some like weird looks and things like that. Now it's like grandma behind the counter at like Flying J is like, oh, what band are you in? And like mm-hmm. actually like psyched about it. So that's fucking awesome. And it's because their grandkids are in metal bands or some shit. So it's like they're pushing it the agenda, which is awesome. And, and it's part of the culture too. Like, yes. oh, you're a band on tour. You need coffee. Yeah. You're gonna be, you, you're gonna pay me. <laughs> we take free coffee. It's like back to the accessibility thing that, that you mentioned too, yeah. and I think like we're seeing this like firsthand on this tour, not just because kids are young and playing in bands. I mean, that's always been happening, mm-hmm. but also like I don't know um, what well, that I think they were called uh, Dwellers Piece in oh, uh, Daytona, two piece uh, Daytona Beach, and it was like a two piece like power violence like grind band. Couldn't be like any younger, but. Not only were they good, it was kind of, like, uh, really cool for me to see that be- them being so young. I was like, that they know to do that already. <laughs> like, <laughs> for uh, if we, when we were that age, I, I don't know. I don't know. We were probably still figuring it out. But now with the internet being as accessible as it is, it's, I mean, shit, I can't wait to see, like, the first, like, grind band where and no member is over 10 years old. And they're <laughs> calling everyone a poser because you're old. <laughs> I was 20 just, year old showing up to the show drinking a beer and they're like you're a loser I was gonna say they're gonna start <laughs> like, and then that would be the most punk grind fucking thing I could think of well that's like the, the original the original gatekeeping of punk rock would be to fuck the old guy right so there you go yeah, it's exactly. full circle or to kick out the old people I was just gonna say wait till, wait till like some 17 year old I was like oh, I'm actually in 1984 get Yo. your shit right well, yeah, bro and it's like, like all the time I mean like, there's kid? Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, it's, it's been happening a lot more, but I can't, and I don't remember what year, and not to just bring up Maryland Death Fest again, but there was a year where this, it was like this kid, I don't know, was definitely under like eight years old, was there with his dad, had like a custom drawn like King Diamond shirt with the huge earmuffs on, and I was just, and he's running around in the pit, everyone's like, you know, obviously paying mind that there's a little, yeah. uh, basically just older than toddler child in the vicinity, but I was I was just joking with people being like, dude, one day he's gonna be punking some kid being like, you, like, I, wait, where were you? I was, t- you know, nine years old at an immolation set <laughs> at, a, at Maryland Death Fest, yeah. and, and you were just getting into it when, and I just can't wait for somebody to think that they're that cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, bro, I was, th- it's like, bro, you have more scene cred than me, and I could be your dad. <laughs> it's like kids definitely will, like, have a deeper knowledge of things. Um, I forget, I always use sarcophago as a good example, I remember, because, yeah, like, some kid... Some young little punk kid is like, you don't know the entire sarcophago discography? And I'm like, dude, that was a T-shirt that, like, someone in another band yeah. wore on the back of a cassette, and I'd go to record stores and would never find that. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't think in my old age to go on the Internet and look it up. Now these kids, like, just know. They, like, have this much deeper knowledge and intimate, like, appreciation for things that, like, 
I, it's almost like, you know, the old idea is like, oh, I had to go to the record store and look for it. That's more authentic. No, it's not. These kids fucking love it just as much, and they're fucking into it. We forget as we get old and, like, stop caring about shit, but, like, it's cool to see that they're that enthusiastic and have that fucking access. And the irony of that statement while they're playing a show at a record shop, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we're... Hey, still go to record we'll, 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 oh, we're, I mean, we'll, we're endless fans of physical print media and, yes, and yes. music especially out of that and I mean as as big of that fan as I am every time I move I still curse the fact that I own as much physical media that I do but oh, um, but I mean I don't know I, I think that it's it's a nice you know connecting aspect to it I could listen to as much streaming stuff as I want and I think and I and I like that it's there I mean like for us we're at this age I'm sure everyone in this room is like Old enough to know what it was like before any of that stuff was accessible, but then still, like, when it first became a thing, and then, like, the days of Napster, LimeWire, Kazaa, Morpheus, Lime <laughs> the, the, the archaic version of that compared to what it is now, you're downloading tracks that are labeled as something that's not maybe not even what it is. You can still discover music like that, so anyone that would try to, like, gatekeep the, 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 the current um, accessibility is, like, I mean, once the internet started, I think that it was over before it began. Are you going to torrent me a Linkin Park album, Grandpa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you like, I remember when you would download something on Napster and you thought it was this, and it turned out somebody like, it was either like some, it was something not at all what it was, or it was some weird mashup of a song, or, you know, four out of, you know, five times you would get like the track that you were looking for, and there other times you were, had no idea what you were listening to. You would think that it was the thing that it was labeled as, and sometimes you'd be like, this, this man fucking sucks. The spirit of exploration, just like any way that you have to discover something new, like that enthusiasm's always authentic and the same. Or you accidentally discover problematic bands because you only, you downloaded the album only, and yeah. you're, you're like, oops. I didn't know. <laughs> Things are clear. I should have Googled able. the politics. Yeah. It's like, it's like, and that's before you even had the possibility. You couldn't do of, it. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> even before you had the possibility of breaking your fucking computer because you're like, oh, that wasn't a torrent at all. That was just a straight up virus. Yeah, yeah or if you, yeah. Oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what, uh, I think we pretty much run the course here, but I do have one last uh, question. You guys got any uh, tour horror stories? Because you guys seem to be pretty well uh, road veterans. You had any... Uh... From this tour? No, just in general. I oh, mean, it, it sounds like this, to this tour has gone pretty well yeah, for you guys. This tour has been pretty all right. Um, well, I mean, there's, there's definitely stuff that I'm sure, like, if I, if I got, if you got me going, it would probably come to mind, but, uh, Alex doesn't want to admit that he got ripped off, uh, for barbecue yesterday in oh, San Antonio. No. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, I got ripped off multiple times for food on this tour, but, uh, I mean, you, 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 you stumped, you, you tripped me because now I was going to say something. Now you're just thinking about that shit? No. It's there, there hasn't been any horror stories on this one, per se. I mean, the, just a general horror story is like, uh, my favorite horror story that has happened to me multiple times in other bands, thankfully not this one, is when you're like, man, we're making really good time. And then you cross that invisible line and you're like, oops, the time zone just switched. We're actually fucking late for the show. <laughs> and then you're driving like 100 miles per hour and you get there and you have to do the huck and chuck where you open the van doors, put it on stage, play, leave the van doors open with the merch guy, get back in the fucking van and go to the next town. <laughs> Thankfully, that hasn't happened to us. But uh, any other deeper horror stories, that's a whole separate fucking interview. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, right. luck luckily for us, at least on this tour, like, like the, the worst thing that happened is, you know, we were s sitting completely still on the highway where they, where they like, we had to watch them like recover a wreck like in front of us. And, uh, and then you don't even get to drive by the wreck and see anything. It's just the whole thing was someone out there much no, no redeeming more. value. Of, uh, I mean, hopefully no one died, but yeah, still, so you, it still makes you wish because you were sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> so no, le no like neo-Nazis or crackheads or anything no, so showing up. No, like, uh, nothing like that. No, yeah, we've, that we've been in Miami. Oh, tell, uh, me yeah. about the, tell me about the bathroom in Miami. Well, I mean, so it was, it was Blake's birthday in Miami, so we just ate just too much food uh, and, and, and seafood specifically, ah. and then by the time we're at the venue, you feel like you really got to go to the bathroom, and there's no lock on the bathroom, there's no divider between the, the shitter and the urinal, there's no toilet paper, there's just there's, there's oh. nothing, there's no redeeming value. <laughs> Just the yeah, you just it's need just it. A, yeah, it's just you need you need it. You need the bathroom more than it needs you, and and it's just it's just not it's just not fun at all. 
you know, like, there you go. there's the horror story. You're, all, yeah, all the bathrooms. Just yeah, you're sitting there, you're sitting there, going like, we're we're setting up for our set, and I remember like it was hitting me really hard, and I had already gone to the, the not to give too much detail. I had already gone to the bathroom twice, and I'm like, if this, after the last time it hit me, it was such an emergency. I said to the to these guys. If this happens again, like during our set, I'm just gonna have to just get up and walk, and walk away. Like intermission. <laughs> There's no way I'm making it through the rest of the set. Like it's just... intermission at a grind show. That, that I don't think that's been done before. Yeah. Maybe you guys should uh, have some more experimental seafood in Florida. Yeah, and I mean, see like, if, uh, we're, yeah. conduct an experiment. I mean, we're lucky. This is a this is a young band. We haven't had any like anything horrible happen to us. If you just asked us in general, there's plenty of like stories. I'm sure we could come up with from the years that we've been out there but yeah been pretty good well honestly i'm glad to hear that guys and i i hope the rest of the tour goes well for you guys i want i want to thank you very much for your time yeah, man. and yeah yeah thank all right you, let's have us a fun show guys Hell yeah deep video, uh, deep video live anti-sapien check them out deep video live deep video live have a good one y'all oh yeah. Right. yeah thanks guys appreciate thank it. you